Hello, Dave. This is Ooh. episode. Hi. This is episode thirty-nine. Wow. We're getting old. That was true before episode thirty-nine. For you. <laughs> Yeah, well, Actually, okay. when I part my hair this way, I have a nice gray patch. So I'm getting so, old too. Mm -hmm. you All are, right. yeah, you, anyway, yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, here we are again. We've jumped back in. And in some ways, you were talking about how you wished this was, or maybe this really is the first uh, episode of Advent. Um, we moved on from the Beatitudes and here we are entering into where the church is in the church calendar, which is Advent right before Christmas, uh, the four weeks before Christmas. And we talked a little bit about what Advent means. And even you talked a little bit about how you came to appreciate and use the church calendar um, and what that has meant to you. Um, but we've been having fun <laughs> doing these. And we wanted to ask all of you, you know, some of you have sent us Facebook messages or you'll leave comments, but we really do appreciate any of the feedback. And we do want to know what do and what does not just the material, but, um, you know, hearing Dave talk and hearing these talks, what has it stirred in you? Um, and what do you look forward to when you see these pop up and any kind of response that you'd like to share with us is really helpful. We've just kind of been experimenting with what this is and mm -hmm. how this even started, but um, I don't know if you want to speak to any of that, Dave. Yeah, a little bit. Um, what what um, what this Advent thing in particular is, and I think we're going to continue on with other, I'm, an, I'm in my mind, I want to put some bundles of sermons together um, thematically that we would be able to bring but, but this advent thing i um part of what was difficult about it was i have a lot on it and was where to start and what really tells the story and what's the metaphor that carries it if i um could have thought ahead and planned it better i do think this is episode one um but that doesn't matter but with we're kind of i don't know even what we would ask people to do but to kind of enter into the experiment with us like what works because i think i want to do advent again next year a different way maybe the same way but lent i want to be a little more prepared for lent and and bringing people through the story um and just excited about that so we're but this is the first time for this and so that's the experimental part um uh, how well does this bring people into the story lent and or advent and i mix those words up all the time. And when I do, just fix it in your own brain. <laughs> we do. We're used to it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so here we are. You're going to jump in in a really um, interesting spot, shall we say, one you might not expect to jump into when talking about Advent, when talking about Christ coming. Um, but let's just do it. I'm excited. Okay. Jump in. Yeah, me too. Okay. Well, part of the deal is that when you're when you enter into Advent and Lent as a pastor or leader, what we're trying to invite people into is the story. And um, the truth is, um, it's a story that we all think we know. I mean, Christmas, are you kidding? I mean, most pastors that I know go a little crazy uh, around Christmas and Easter because how do we tell that thing a different way um, with a different slant? It's the same story. And maybe we don't need to, you know, gussy it up at all but the, the thing is i think sometimes with stories that we think we know we maybe don't know them as well as we think dallas willard uh, said once that familiarity can breed unfamiliarity like we're so familiar yeah 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 i know this thing and so it, that's where as a teacher i really do like things that spin it a little bit it's the same story but we look at it from a different angle, but I, I, I do think that the Christmas story in particular has become domesticated, that we've tamed it, um, that it's become consistent with the season. And I'm not saying these are bad things, but that it's quaint and it's cute. Uh, it's sentimental, um, like a Hallmark Christmas movie, which, you know, like makes, if, that, if, if, if I ended up, if I was like eternally, being forced to watch Hallmark Christmas movies, I would know I was in hell. That's how I would know. 
<laughs> there's no fire at all. It's Hallmark Christmas. Anyway, that kind of syrupy stuff that, oh, isn't that cute? But there's, there's nothing, uh, there's no real drama. There's nothing at stake. Um, there's nothing scary or challenging. There's nothing heroic. And because of that, and when it gets like, there's nothing interesting, um, I'm afraid. So with this episode of this kind of introduction to Advent, what I want us to do is have an entry point into the story that's a little bit unexpected. Uh, it's a strange place to enter the story because we're gonna end, we're gonna enter the story of Advent at the end of uh, Acts 28. So the end of Acts 28 is kind of the end of an episode in the big story of God. And um, here's the picture in Acts 28. Um, things have toned down. Um, if it was a movie, the, the okay, there's not anybody getting stoned or killed. There's no wind blowing. Paul is in a house prison, which sounds horrible, but it's not. It's pretty serene. Um, he's, he's, there's not a lot of drama. Um, he's got access to people. People come and go. Um, in this particular text, the leading Jews of the city in Rome we're coming to see him and kind of um, debate with him about certain things. And he wraps the whole thing up. He's talking to these leaders, these Jewish leaders from Rome with these words. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God that I have been proclaiming to you. And he meant them, but I've been proclaiming since Acts chapter 9. Um, uh, is... <laughs> okay since i've been proclaiming to you what are we going to do with that <laughs> nothing <laughs> it's going to stay right there no, no you want okay the you he's proclaiming to you are the synagogue leaders as i said um in rome and of you the holy spirit has rightly said um you are ever hearing but never understanding you are ever seeing but never perceiving fascinating thing to say he's saying to these religious people I uh, are typically there, the people who go to church, they're the people who think they know the story, okay? So I've been proclaiming to you and the this, this salvation of God and you are ever hearing, but never understanding, ever seeing, but never perceiving. So now I'm done. Basically, he says at the end of verse 28, and the salvation of God now will go to the Gentiles. Boom, drop the mic, he's kind of done. It's a remarkable thing to say, uh, a monumental shift that literally will change the world. Um, and um, if this were a movie that we were watching, um, one that let's say we've been watching since Acts chapter one, and now in Acts chapter 28, verse 28, he says this thing, okay, um, you guys have heard, but you haven't heard, you've seen, but you haven't seen, and now I'm, the, the gospel is going to the Gentiles. Um, if we were watching that and then the, the curtain goes down, we'd be thinking, is that it? Um, there, 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 there's got to be more to this story. You can't stop the story there. Um, because until now, if you've watched the whole movie since Acts chapter one, this movie has been epic, beginning as it does with the unexpected and long awaited fulfillment of a promise. Acts chapter one is what? Is when the Spirit comes, uh, Jesus has already been raised from the dead. The ascension is part of chapter one. So the sun is shining. If it's a movie, uh, the sun is shining uh, as we enter into the movie. The dreams, dreams have come true. Um, and all of that good stuff, uh, the prophetic words being fulfilled happened in unexpected way in kind of a, you'll never believe it way. And mm. uh, yeah, it's a, that's what you'd be feeling at the end of this movie, because if he'd seen the movie, um, just before this movie, um, all hope uh, seemed to be lost. Um, uh, because the hero, now we're thinking about the movie, as it were, the story, the part of the story in the Gospels, where uh, the hero had been, who the hero, as Jesus, fell into enemy hands. Uh, he'd been betrayed by his friend Judas. Um, and so now the enemy has him. Say, so if it's a big epic story, the hero of the story, who's going to fulfill the promise in the movie before Acts 1 to 28, has been taken. Um, they've got him. And the way they want to send a message that is the enemies of the hero, that is Jesus, the way they want to send a message to the rebel forces, to the rebellion that's going to bring the kingdom of God, is to put this hero guy on public display. 
to torture him, um, to make an example of him, to parade him through the streets, which they literally did, as he had to drag his own cross and then nail him and hang him from that cross. But like any good hero, um, uh, he's true to the cause, he's, he's, he's true to the, and because with his last breath in this incredible story movie, uh, he cries freedom like that, except that's a different movie. That's uh, 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 Braveheart, right? Remember Braveheart? So I don't know epic. if everybody can tie all the dots. It's epic. It's epic. Mm -hmm. And there's and here's this hero guy, uh, um, uh, William Wallace, and he's paying this price to set his people free. And finally, he's the one who gets sacrificed. And with his last dying breath, he's true to the cause, crying freedom. And it's really powerful. Um, but this is a different movie, if you will. Uh, um, because in this one, the hero, Jesus, uh, doesn't scream freedom. He whispers, uh, forgive them, which is, oh, okay, <laughs> inspirational. Okay, wow, 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 how could he do that? But it's over, okay? And um, if you're watching the movie, you're ready for the credits to roll, because that's what happens in the William Wallace movie. Right on, and then it credits roll, and we go, wow, that was inspirational. Except um, before they, the credits roll in this particular movie, um, which is in the Gospels, um, like Han Solo um, in Star Wars, and like um, Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, and like Aslan in the Chronicles of, the Narnia, of Narnia, all of a sudden, in a very unexpected way, he's back. Han Solo is, remember that? He's, he's back, and Gandalf is back. and and, and Aslan is back, they're not dead. So it isn't over. I thought it was over, it's not over. And then, and then the credits roll, okay? I hope I'm confusing you horribly. Back to the movie that is the Gospels. Now he's back, this hero, Jesus, who was to fulfill a promise, looked like he failed. The enemy won, they didn't win, Jesus won. And now he's back, and now the credits roll. You're sitting in the movie, the lights come up. Um, it's time to go home. And as you're sitting there, if it was a movie, um, you're just sitting there going, um, um, there's gotta be a sequel. That's, it can't end there. It can't end there. There's gotta be a sequel. And, um, and, and the only question you have in your mind is, cause you go, you just, you ever done that, watch the movie and you go, I know there's another one coming. Even the way they end it, they almost 100%. tell you, there's another one coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. they leave something un done unresolved a question that needs to be answered and they decided we're going to leave you hanging and all you can do is wait wait there's an there's an advent theme right there right i worked that in really well great job but all you can do is wait and how long you don't know um because you're dying you know what happens next um so you do what you do um in the parking lot after the movie you google it and you find out whoa it's coming out in you know six months or something like that. It's gonna be on Netflix even yeah. tonight if you want. But actually in the story I'm talking about, it's in Acts chapter one. There it is, we can go, we can go start reading the rest of the story in Acts chapter one, Acts chapter one beginning as it does, not in a dark place, um, but in a dream come true place. Again, I said it a minute ago, like if we're a movie and we're watching Acts chapter one, opening scene, the sun is shining, um, the dream has come true, uh, um, you know, we're all in safe in our shire, um, promises are fulfilled, are fulfilled, dreams come true as he pours out his spirit. Um, and when the spirit comes, they receive power. Uh, and these little, in fact, the epic stories all have these same themes of little people like Mary and insignificant people like the hobbits. And all of a sudden they have a significant role to play and you will be witnesses. And part of that story of, of, of the opening scene of Acts of that particular episode of the story of God is that there appeared on their heads little tongues of fire. Very weird thought and um, mysterious and isn't it cool? Well, it's weird actually, it, it, it's odd a bit. And to me, the symbolism of the tongues of fire, maybe there's a lot more symbolism than this is is that they were just a little flicker, little tongues of fire. I mean, a little, it's just a little flicker. 
And that means two things. One, a little flicker of fire. It's a little flicker, a little candle. It isn't going to do much. Not only is it not going to do much, but it's easily extinguished. Gone. So it's a flicker of fire, a small thing. But then the story is the fire spreads. 3,000 come to faith in one day because the fire has begun to spread. Then there's 5,000 keep people come to faith. And uh, just like any great story that's truly epic with everything going this well, okay? Resurrection, the spirit comes, tongues of fire, the fire spreads, 3,000, 5,000, we're winning. In any really epic story, there has to be conflict. There's conflict. And there needs to be some sort of, of opposition um, and it, it, the story of God is actually the archetype of every other story that's like that because the enemy attempts to put the fire out in the book of Acts, in the movie that we're watching. And Acts chapter eight is when it first starts to happen. Saul comes along and with, it, with him, a great persecution. And if you're watching the movie, you go, oh no, oh no. People are running for their lives, um, terrified of losing their lives and they've lost everything. They have so there's a big oh no moment in this epic story that started with so much hope and all of our promises have been fulfilled. Um, but as he that is Saul in this persecution attempts to stamp the fire out by stamping on it like hey, we're gonna put you to death, all it does is spread the fire. All it does is just it's like you stomp on the fire and the embers start flying and kind of why did I do that? Because now it spread and the wind picks it up and. And now the, the fire has gone, these little embers, these little people from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria. And all of a sudden, all sorts of people in all sorts of places are on fire, as it were, which enrages Saul even more. Um, it says in verse, in, in, in Acts 8 or 9, look it up, it's in the Bible, that he's breathing threats, um, desperately, angrily trying to put out the fire of the kingdom of God, but in a fascinating flash, <laughs> the fire that this saw guy is trying to extinguish ignites him. It gets on him and seizes him. And when it did, he got on fire and the fire spread even more. So there's this conflict and, oh no, and oh, I'll fix you, but then it spreads and um, nothing can stop it. In real life, as people are having to play it out, it gets played out with three missionary journeys um, by Paul from chapter 13 to 28 of Acts chapter of the book of Acts. And in those chapters uh, and in those stories, those journeys, lots of drama. It was a movie, <laughs> tribulations, oh no moments, um, trials, close calls, near death experiences against all odds almost every day, but the word of God continues to spread and to uh, prevail. And finally, we're here in chapter 28, the end of the movie. It's been a long one, three hours long, you know, and it's beginning to wind down and Paul is still alive, but that won't last long, but that's not part of the story. And at the end of the whole thing, this whole episode that started with the coming of the spirit and wow, every dream has come true. He makes this pronouncement about the salvation of God that began in Genesis 12. They didn't begin with Pentecost. Salvation of God began in Genesis 12 with Abraham because from the beginning in Genesis 12, God has been on this, God has been on this rescue mission to reconcile all things to himself and now this salvation um, message, the salvation of God, the uh, reconciliation of all things to himself is now going to the Gentiles. And then with that pronouncement, the screen goes black Then the credits roll. And as they do, you're going, is that, is that, it? Is, is that it? Is that the end of the, is that the end of the, story and then you know well, you know there's got to be a sequel to this story now this would be a whole nother talk because the sequel to the story is us and if you want to talk about being in the story the sequel to that story the gospel going to the gentiles 
we're chapter 30 and 31 and 32, and maybe we're chapter 50, where we are living in the story right now, that's, we are part of the sequel and it's still being written. But then kind of come back to this whole thing of these movies and things, uh, because like most epic movies um, that have sequels, and we're in the sequel right now, we also have prequels. Um, uh, that explain when and when you get the prequel, the story before the story of Acts chapter one. When you see the story before that, it kind of explains even more what was in the movie you just saw. Let me make this a little more accessible, because it, it, it's it's like Star Wars, and I, I love this analogy. The movie Star Wars, um, the first uh, episode or movie that was ever made of Star Wars came out in 1977. I don't know how old I was, but 77 means I was married one year, 40 million years ago. Um, you want to know how old I was? You weren't even born yet. <laughs> you were, you, I'm not going to say that. I just have, to, I just have to rub it in. That's <laughs> uh, all, all I got. No, that's all you got. That I'm that younger hysterical. than you. <laughs> that was good. Anyway, um, but, but. What I remember most about it, well, I remember a lot of it, but it took us by storm. I mean, it was like, talk about an epic movie that what you're going the whole time. You're just, your eyes are bugging out. Uh, we'd never seen anything like this before. We'd never heard anything like this before. Um, and at the end of that movie, even though this is pretty much a new genre, a, a, diff, a new way of doing it, at the end of the movie, you kind of, you, you're sitting there going, you, that's it? You can't. Oh wait, there's gotta be more. There, there's gotta be another movie. They almost told you that there's another movie. There's a sequel to this, but then we watched all the sequels. Remember? Maybe you don't remember. <laughs> I'm old and you're not, but we watched all the sequels because after that one, I, I, I could have listed them. And, and, but then we find out there's not just sequels to this Star Wars thing, there's prequels to the Star Wars thing. And it, you know, obviously they're trying to make money, but it became a fascinating thing. And then it, it, I remember how long it took me to figure out, wrap my head around this. And it took me a long time because I am old, that that first Star Wars movie that we saw in 1977 and were, wow, wasn't the first, it was the fourth. Wait, 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 how do you, what, what? We entered the story in the fourth episode of the Star Wars they call it a trilogy. Trilogy. It's way more than a. Yeah. There's way more than three. So to to, to actually get the whole story of that first episode that we saw in 1977 that we thought was the first movie, we had to go back and see the prequels. We had to go back and see them all. And the reason I'm saying all of that is because um, it's Advent. That's, that's it. All fits in my mind into Advent and. One of the points we keep making about Advent is it's an invitation to enter the story. But to enter the story, it helps to know um, the story of Advent. It's not the first episode. Maybe that's not a big deal to know. But I think it's part of what helps can help us enter into the story. That it, if you were a first century, if you were a little girl named Mary, and and you were experiencing the episode that we now refer to as Advent. Um, it, was, uh, uh, it, was, it was just one part of the story. And it began a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Mm -hmm. It was a story that began before the prophets and the kings and Abraham and Isaac as God was on this rescue mission with lots of twists and turns before it came to Mary and Watt with lots of glorious moments and horrific losses and if you like movies with lots of blood and guts, read the Bible. Um, <laughs> um, right. But this rescue mission is all about reconciling all things and all people to himself. Um, but then we get into this Advent episode as the curtain goes up on the movie. And, 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 and we're just starting to watch it. And you may or may not know what came before. But as the curtain goes up on Advent, the world is in a very dark place. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1, remember the curtain goes up, the lights are on. The promises have been fulfilled. Advent enters, and we that if the, the movie's accurate, it starts with gloomy music, um, darkness everywhere, and it's been dark for a very long time. The human race is at the end of its rope. 
um, they've lost hope. 400 years, actually. They've been waiting. And they've been waiting for things to get better. They've been waiting for promises that they thought God gave to be uh, fulfilled. They've been waiting for healing to come. So the movie begins with lament. Mm. So different than Acts chapter 1. It begins with, the spirit has come. <laughs> Advent, if it's a movie, begins with um, lament, like like Frodo and Sam mm. at the edge of Mordor. Mordor was the place where hope goes to die. Um, in Psalm 44, 23, the cry, the lament is, how long, O oh Lord? Uh, how, how long will you ignore our cries? Arouse yourself, arouse yourself. Why do you sleep? Why do you hide your face and forget our affliction? So as the curtain goes up on Advent, everything's dark. There's nothing ho, ho, ho about it. <laughs> you know, or no, nothing, not one thing about it. But um, epic story, um, underneath the surface where you can't always see it, something stirring, something unseen. And what is seen, um, it isn't what you think. Um, two examples of that, and that's we'll wrap it up and it's just setting it up for next time. The first is found in Romans 8, and I talked about this in our last episode. Romans 8, Paul is reflecting on the darkness and the pain of the world that he lives in, the darkness. Uh, uh, um, and he doesn't deny the pain, and he doesn't deny, oh, it's not that dark, it's pretty good. Um, but he does interpret the pain and the darkness, mm -hmm. and he interprets as it, he interprets it as birth pains. Meaning this, that though things look scary and dark and unsettling, and though if you were to look at things, like we could look at things in our world right now and think, well, it's, it just looks like something's about to die. He goes, no, 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 you're interpreting it wrong. It does hurt and it is scary, but this, is, this, is, this season we're in and is not about something that's about to die. It's about something that's about to be born. It's, it's something is being born here that's going to turn this whole thing around. You can't see it yet, but it's going to turn this thing around. So much like Lent, uh, we wait. The whole thing of Advent is wait. But we're waiting for something to be born. Um, we're waiting in hope that um, something from this is going to come to life. Second thing, um, example, if you will, that everything in this episode, this Advent episode, and we just want to notice it as we go into it for the next couple of weeks. Um, everything in this Advent episode that will ultimately save the day uh, will find their beginnings in insignificant places and insignificant people and insignificant things, little things um, like a word or a seed uh, that comes to Mary and says, um, you will be great. The, 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 you, um, what you're bearing will be great. This child will be great. Um, and she says, be it done unto me. She receives it and nobody sees it. Nobody, there's no, you know, the, the, the planting of the seed, the life of God in her is not a big event. Nobody, it doesn't get in the paper, but it, just like when it got planted in you and me, it grew and it grew and it grew. So all of the significant events that ended up saving the day in this Advent season, um, they have their beginnings in something small, like a little girl named Mary, like a little town called Bethlehem that no one would know its name if it hadn't been for this, and like a baby born in a barn. And I thought, even last Sunday, Dave Bricky, our new pastor at Open Door, talked about how... Um, a baby, a baby. I thought you were going to send something to help. <laughs> the whole point. It's the whole. It's the whole. It's the whole point of Advent. It's that. It's that. Um, that upside down reality. I'll just close with this. One of the things we do at Christmas, and and it's really part of the tradition. And maybe we know what it means, and maybe we don't. And maybe it just becomes part of the sentimental thing. But there's well, we like candles. You know, and we have a candle lighting or a candle lit service um, on Christmas Eve usually. It's beautiful. 
service. But Jet, basically, while it does create atmosphere, that's unbelievable. It's kind of takes your breath away. And like, I don't know if anything's more beautiful than watching the auditorium fill up with light, you know, when it was dark. Symbolism of that's pretty obvious. But what's really amazing about the candle, and you, we're lighting a lint candle, a, 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 an advent candle every Sunday, one candle. And the thing about the candle is, this is that cute. I love candles. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's great. Um, but it's it this it's a, it's, a, it's a little flicker. It's like the tongues of fire. It's a little flicker. And two things. What's that gonna do? How can that help burn down the evil things that need to be burned down? And it's so easy to blow it up. Um, and that's the whole point. That's <laughs> that's the whole point because it starts with a girl in Mary. Town. And that home is a baby in a barn and a little tiny flicker of light, fire that got you on fire, and then you, the fire spreads. It's fire spread. The fire spreads. And that's, and that's, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, but that, to me, that's the, it's, uh, I love the sequel concept, but to enter into, I, I, I love entering into Advent with this sense of allowing, you know, um, I don't want people to get depressed, but the darkness that we're all very aware of right now, might it's not, we could, we can do this, to lean into that and go, I'm in Advent. Uh, if, you're, if you're feeling it, you're in Advent. How long, oh Lord? You know, and um, and the same God who works through little things and brings life to them, then does it now. And um, uh, that's a whole. To me, that I, I love that story. I don't know how well I told it, but um, that's a much more interesting story than ho ho ho. <laughs> anyway, so. I mean, I remember where I was and I was quite a bit older, even though I grew up in church when I realized that, and part of this I think is the Protestant upbringing too, is that we spend so much time in the New Testament. We kind of think that's all there is. And so yeah. I remember when I realized number one, that God is actually the hero of this story. It's not always Abraham or David or, Paul or, you know, whoever the character is that we're talking about that Sunday. So right. I remember as an adult, when I realized Christmas wasn't the beginning, <laughs> that all these books of the Bible before were speaking to God coming. Mm -hmm. And then when I realized too, that the story, the like revelation isn't the end of God's work, that my life can be a part of what he's doing. And my yes, my yes, what we talked about in our previous episode, my yes, when I was five years old, you when you were eight, and um, mm -hmm. that that God gets to continue to work in me. And that's what that yes is really about. Um, yep. These, yeah, and then more of what you talked about too, just how easy it is for us to identify now, maybe more than ever for some of us. Um, and we're just coming up to speed with the rest of the world, I think. I, yeah. I once heard someone say, um, you know, Christians around the world more identify with um, Jesus the sufferer, Jesus suffering, mm -hmm. um, and the God's people suffering, where we like sure. to, you know, our American culture likes to identify with the successes of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the... Oh, yeah, uh, Jesus will make you healthy, wealthy. Uh, yeah. Right, bring yeah. you everything you ever wanted, I think. Right. You know, the American church now has this opportunity to catch up with where the rest of the world is already at and identify. Well, actually, yeah, not only that, but actually um, not only catch up with the rest of the world, but enter the actual story. Uh, yeah, also that. But, <laughs> Maybe know, for the first time ever. Right, right. Because that other story isn't the story. Right. God will make you wealthy. It's not the story. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to hear from people what, what this stirred up in them. And I think I even still have so much more to chew on. And I've heard you share some of this stuff before, but <laughs> in some new ways, I'm identifying some places that I really need God to come. 
Um, and am I yeah. willing to wait for that? Am I even willing to say yes to that? Sure. Because yep. it's going to cost me something, right? Yep. I think I lost you there. I think the other thing that I that I that I like about it, and because we talk about um, inviting people into the story, mm -hmm. is and I didn't get time to develop it, but <clears throat> when Acts twenty eight ends, and it's now going to the Gentiles, this whole idea that there's a sequel and we're writing it, that, that, that we are we are in the story, mm -hmm. and um, you don't. I, in some ways, I would say you don't even get a choice to be in it or not in it. You're in. You might get a choice what part you play. You can play the cynic, or you can, you know, you can play the, um, uh, you can play the be it done unto me too. You can, you can be be the one who's trying to find that place in the story that God is calling you to play a role, big or small. Mm -hmm. um, and so the story continues to be told. And then keep in mind, that uh, this is so encouraging. I think it should be that he's th this this thing of he almost all the, the things he uses to save the day are things you wouldn't expect, mm -hmm. and they're little seeds, mustard seeds, even a mustard seed, even you, even me, even dumb kids <laughs> <laughs> like yours and like and, mine, uh, ordinary. Ordinary, wonderfully ordinary. Yeah. People who say, "Be done unto me." Mm. Yep. Whew. You gave us a lot there. All Probably right. too much. It's a little bit of a fire hose thing, which I enjoy doing. Yeah. Hope you had a bar of soap. <laughs> take a shower for today. I don't want to take another one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, again, please tell us what stirred in you and what you're chewing on and where this is taking you. Um, and maybe it relates to what we talked about. And maybe God is writing a, a different story and has different things for you um, during this Advent waiting time of 2020. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Dave. Yep. You bet. It's we'll fun do doing this. We'll do another episode in a few days. Yes, we will. Do you do you have more material after that, or you is that all know, you I got? So. That's all I got. I knew it. No, I think I have some more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you everybody. Later.